All right, welcome back to PyCSE. Today I'm going to talk about the latest book we've written on automatic differentiation and scientific programming, uh, specifically using the library JAX. So automatic differentiation was uh, is an old idea. It's a couple decades old now, but it's made a resurgence due to machine learning, and it's the primary way that you get the gradients that you need in the optimization of machine learning algorithms. But the gradients are just derivatives, and it turns out that automatic differentiation can be used for a lot of other things in science and engineering, uh, things like uncertainty propagation, uh, different things in calculus, science and engineering uh, calculations that rely on derivatives or properties, and in optimization. So it's pretty exciting in the science and engineering field that it's now possible to write programs that use derivatives where it's not necessary to derive and then implement the derivative or implement some finite difference for, uh, formulation that you have to check for convergence and accuracy. Instead, automatic differentiation is basically a program that takes a derivative of a program. It's equivalent to the analytical solution and it's very convenient so you can focus on, on the programming part of the problem statement, not on uh, the derivation and implementation. So it takes a while to figure out how to do this because it's new and uh, it's not, not entirely obvious. So I wrote this book and it will teach you uh, all about making derivatives of a scalar function. I'll show you a little example. You import grad and then it's uh, easy if we define a function here. We have a simple polynomial. Then we just have one line to take the gradient of f. So that's the gradient of the output with respect to x. So df dx, and uh, you can evaluate it, and uh, and it works uh, like a function as you might expect. So this is for scalar functions. Those are functions that I'll put a number. If you have vector functions, then we talk about the Jacobian, and the Jacobian is equally simple. So we just import uh, the either the forward or reverse Jacobian. There's some details on how the derivative is evaluated if it's going in a forward pass through the program or in a backward uh, pass through through the program. You can read about the details uh, in here, but basically it's just one line again. It's the Jacobian of f, and in this case it takes the derivative of the output, so these two values here, with respect to the input here. And so it results in a two by two matrix in this case in just uh, a single line. It's very convenient. Similarly, we get a Hessian. That's the second order of partial derivatives. Uh, these are, are also somewhat tedious to, to work out. So if we have a function of two variables here, this is what the Hessian would look like. It's a two by two array where you would have to implement, derive and imp implement all four of these, uh, or may maybe just three if you rely on symmetry. But still it's tedious and we get it here in a single line, uh, which, is, which is really convenient. So those are the, the three main things that happen in getting the derivatives. And then uh, the rest of this book mostly talks about uh, applications. Um, there's a few derivative uh, miscellaneous topics. You, you can get derivatives through data structures with JAX. It's pretty convenient. So you can have a dictionary. Here we have uh, a dictionary of parameters. And then we get the derivative of the function with respect to parameters. And we can use that. You can have derivatives of, of a function in a class. That's pretty easy. So here we have a class for like a hook spring um, and we define a function of energy. And then down here we take the gradient of energy with respect to the first argument x. And you can see here that gives us the force. So it's, it's very easy to, to write programs that, that use derivatives. All right, so we look at a bunch of different applications in math. We talk about um, how to use uh, gradients for getting implicit derivatives. Um, we get a little bit of math. You can uh, calculate dy dx is, is equal to this ratio of derivatives. Um, we look at using it to plot implicit functions. We can solve uh, differential algebraic equations with derivatives. We can do clever nonlinear solutions to, to equations that are easier than, uh, than just guessing, line integrals, uh, derivatives of integral equations, even uh, interesting ways to solve an ODE that uh, previously weren't, weren't practical. In optimization, there's a whole lot of applications, but the biggest one is that we have easy access to Jacobian and 
uh, Hessian matrices uh, while optimizing. And what that does is it really speeds up algorithms that can, re uh, that can use those. If you don't provide those functions, then it will approximate it by finite differences. And so to give you an idea of how well, um, how well it works, if we just use the, the regular BFGS solver, uh, this is an example with, um, that takes 18 function evaluations. And if we just add the value in grad from JAX on here, it cuts the number of evaluations in half. So in other words, it finishes twice as fast. And if we change to an algorithm like a uh, dog leg or something that can use the Hessian, then it drops down to even five um, of those. So, so it's quite, um, quite convenient that you can um, use those. We can also reformulate uh, problems uh, pretty easily with Lagrangian multipliers. So if we have uh, this constrained optimization problem, then we can just uh, reformulate it as a um, unconstrained problem with the Lagrangian formulation. And that requires us to use some gradients uh, that we have to put together, and then we have a regular unconstrained problem to solve. In, in science and engineering, we have a lot of different things um, that we can do. We can show things like the gibbs duhem equation, um, which is this derivative equation up here that puts constraints on activity coefficients and composition. We can demonstrate that it's true by using, um, auto, or using JAX to calculate the derivatives. We can calculate um, things like the pressure, or um, we can look at heat capacities. Uh, heat capacity is another derivative property, and we can use it to calculate the derivative of the Shomate equations. In molecular simulation, we might have a sum of, uh, of a pair potential like this, and then we can take the derivative of this with respect to R to calculate the forces. So that's shown in, uh, in these examples. So here again, we just this is a generalization of Hooke's law. We can do um, really straightforward uh, error propagation, and that's done, um, again, by using a formula that looks like this. This is a simplified error propagation where we just need all four of these derivatives and the standard error on each parameter. And we can do um, the, the delta method, which is some, some work that we've been doing recently to uh, easily estimate the standard error on a prediction based on derivatives of a function with its parameters in the inverse Hessian um, like this. So this is an easy way to estimate uh, what are the 95% uh, confidence intervals. And the uh, last two things that we can look at are uh, derivatives of numerical solutions to ODEs. And this is something that's just not possible in, uh, in practice because we don't have an analytical solution to the ODE we only have a numerical solution. And it turns out that we can uh, integrate here numerically. And then down here, we can take the Jacobian of that and look at uh, how sensitive things are across the transient time uh, of the solution. Similarly, we can do this with degree of rate control. So here is a uh, complicated or four-step mechanism. And we can write out uh, rate expressions for each one of these and find out that this is the overall rate. And then we can take derivatives of this rate with respect to different parameters uh, to calculate something called a degree of rate control. And it looks like a sensitivity analysis, which is how much does the rate change with respect to a parameter normalized by the rate. Now, um, what's tricky here is that we have uh, at steady state uh, several equations, four equations, and we have to calculate what are the thetas, and then we have to calculate derivatives of that uh, that look like d theta dg. So we have to use the implicit uh, derivative theorem on all four equations here uh, to do that. And so we'll have to calculate a couple of different Jacobians and then do some linear algebra to work it out. So that's done uh, down here. We have a function of the k's that depend on the g's. We have our system of equations that have the four equations that we want to solve. Then we work out uh, what a solution to those are. So here we get uh, a solution to the steady state. So far, all the same thing we would have done otherwise. But we can now get the derivatives that we need just by using the Jacobian. So we calculate two different Jacobians, and we have the um, 
two different values, and then here is where we use the implicit uh, derivative theorem to get the d theta dg. So it's, it's a, a super simple formulation that's one line. And then we can look at the different derivatives that we, uh, that we were interested in like this. So lots of exciting things to do. Um, I just put one example about uh, machine learning. JAX was probably written for people to do machine learning work. And it, it is super good if you're interested in building the, these algorithms from scratch just to see how they work. Um, I put one example on uh, how to set up a neural network with a very simple uh, data structure where everything is stored as a dictionary and the weights and the biases. The neural network just looks at each one of those layers and calculates the activation function of x at the parameters plus the biases and uh, then puts it all together at the end. And then we use uh, a, a simple little data set um, and a simple little uh, sum squared errors um, objective function, and we use uh, the JAX way of, of doing the atom optimization where you take steps and update the weights in each step, All right? And then that gets you, you know, to this kind of simple, simple fit to uh, the simple nonlinear data set. So that's basically it. It's, uh, it's a lot of work compared to what you, use, what you would use in scikit-learn. Uh, here is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of code to get basically the same thing um, because uh, all of that code is, is buried inside the MLP regressor. All right, there's a couple of advanced topics that uh, are interesting when you get into performance uh, issues. So we can do just-in-time compiling where Jax will uh, take your, your Python code and compile it to something that, that's very fast. Uh, it can be lots faster. So here's an example of code that takes about 97 microseconds per loop. If we make it fast, it is only five microseconds per loop. So uh, much, much faster. And there are opportunities for parallelization. I didn't include any examples of that here. Um, you need multiple CPUs uh, or GPUs to do parallelization. And you can also run JAX on GPU or TPU if you have, uh, have access to those. So that's basically it. There's a couple of you know, more advanced topics on uh, vector Jacobian products or Jacobian vector products where you can do math that doesn't require you to actually get a separate Jacobian or Hessian um, and then multiply it by, by a vector. And it's also possible to uh, add your own uh, derivatives if you have functions that, um, that you need derivatives for. So that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, hopefully you can see now that there are lots of different things you can do with automatic differentiation, um, lots of different applications, lots of ways to think about writing programs that uh, 10 years ago we, we just weren't able to do at all. And I've probably spent the last five years kind of learning how to do this stuff, and this book is, is really to uh, streamline that process for you so that you can learn uh, a little bit faster. And it's a good entryway um, into other machine learning um, platforms like TensorFlow or PyTorch that also rely on automatic differentiation, but uh, but have a different um, a different way of working than than Jax does. So you can find the book uh, at the URL in the video description, and if you like it, pick it up. And hope I hope it's useful to you. And uh, if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. So you get notified when new videos come out. Thanks and have a good day.